Hi, I'm Bo, and I'm currently a PhD student at UCL. And today I'll be talking to you about priority effects and mapping evolution. So with priority effects, I mean that resident species uh, preclude the invasion of a community by any later arriving species. And this process has been linked to the macroevolutionary process of niche incumbency. And a classic example of niche incumbency is where the rise in the diversity of mammals was at first limited by the already incumbent lineages of dinosaurs. And equally, niche incumbency has been linked to adaptive radiations, in which the diversity of uh, radiations is limited by how many niches there are actually available. And niche incumbency has been linked to three major patterns. So we would expect a great disparity in species richness, with most diversity being concentrated in single lineages, rather than being very balanced. And secondly, we would expect slowdowns in diversification rate to occur, and eventually the reaching of an equilibrium species richness. And this can be signified by negative delta R statistic. And lastly, we would expect a reduced chance of invasion with time as niches become filled. However, uh, this begs the question if priority effects are actually equivalent to niche incumbency, or if they're not alternative pet, uh, uh, processes that would result in these same patterns. For instance, is there not a more general competition? Or what if we take a look at uh, a point of view from contemporary invasion ecology, we say that invasive species are actually superior over resident species? So to answer this question, uh, we developed an evolutionary meta community simulation model in which we track the evolution of biodiversity in a given geographical area. And within this area, we have multiple species communities. And these communities are linked by colonization. And once a species has colonized multiple communities, uh, this might result in speciation. However, as no two species with the same niche can coexist, this might eventually result in extinction of either one due to competition. And this competition is driven either by the invader win scenario or by the priority effects model. And at the same time, species niche might default, eventually filling niche space. So what we find is that under priority effects and the invader win scenario, is the diversification rate slows down through time. And this also means that uh, we reach an equilibrium species richness under both models. And secondly, what we observe is that under priority effects, we observe that phylogenies are highly imbalanced with most species diversity concentrated in single lineages, but diversity is distributed very evenly on, among the invader wind scenario. And secondly, uh, thirdly, what you observe is that uh, species diversity is higher under the priority effects model in contrast to the invader wind scenario. And this can be explained by looking at the range size distribution. Our ranges are again very equally in size among the invader wind scenario. There are a couple of young lineages with very small ranges. However, what we see under the priority effects model is that there are a lot of old species with also very small ranges. And it is this maintenance of these very old and rare lineages on the priority effects that results in a higher species richness. So what about inflation resistance? So what we observe is that with the long-term establishment success on the y-axis, on the x-axis with the time of introduction of a species to the meta community since the start of the radiation is that the later species introduced into the meta community the lower its uh, chance to successfully establish itself so this means that meta communities actually become invasion resistant regardless of the process that play out on such a local scale <coughs> And so in summary, what we see is that uh, slowdowns nor invasion resistance actually require priority effects to be explained. Rather, it's competition for limited niche space in general, which explains these patterns. And so this also means that, that these patterns can't be used as evidence for priority effects or any of these local dynamics. Uh, and secondly, what we see is that priority effects result in phylogenetic imbalance. And if priority effects are not taken into account, phylogenetic the trees would be very balanced under competition, which is unlike empirical trees. And lastly, what we see is the priority effects counterintuitively increase species richness. And they do this by boosting the persistence of rare species. So in conclusion, uh, priority effects do not equal competition. And these patterns that we observed here cannot be used as 
conclusive evidence for the presence or their absence. And with that, I would like to thank my supervisors, Alex and Dave, anyone who's contributed to this project in any way or form, uh, my funding sources, and this paper is now available in the college labs. Thank you. <laughs>